guys, it's me Minori and my pet Bear Max. Welcome back to my channel. Hi! Okay, so this week I wanted to challenge myself. Well, honestly, every video is challenging, but today I wanted to learn something new. Like, once you become an adult, it's really hard to learn something new. It takes time, money, and patience. It's also very annoying, frustrating, and very embarrassing to see your first creation. And I was just ready to break my comfort zone. So there's this craft that's called Hand Tufting Punch Needle Thingy. It kind of went viral in Japan and I've been wanting to learn how to do it. So I decided to work on it for 100 hours until I become a pro from a total noob. And hopefully this can inspire you guys to start something new. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Learning something new in 100 hours. Let's get started. Hey guys, this is Minori from the future. This is after I learned everything. Okay, before we start the video, let me give you guys a quick explanation on how to do this punch needle tufting method. First, you want to draw on the canvas. You could get like a light box and trace it, like a projector. I'm just gonna freehand it, but there's so many other ways to make it easier. Just saying. Now I'm going to put it inside the hoop and close it. And next, we're going to need some yarn. Oh, okay. Here we go. And pull through. And guys, that's literally it. So all you need to do is stab. We're just gonna stab, 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 stab. So first stab, make sure to go all the way through. All the way through. And first you wanna kinda like outline it. And now we're going to fill this whole part in. By the way, you don't wanna leave a lot of gaps. You wanna make sure you fill in like every few millimeters. So the front looks something like this. Oh, it's so cute. And I'm gonna get my scissors and cut the loops. Yes, I'm gonna try my very best to cut every single loop. But after a while, I kind of got tired and I started to cut them like so, like horizontally. And now it looks really fluffy. We're going to use some white. Before we start, I'm going to make this needle shorter. So I'm going to twist this. As you can see, you could kind of move it around. So I'm just gonna make it shorter. That's because I want the yolk to be longer and fluffier. And with scissors, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the loops. And here we have a sunny side up. I love how the yolk is kind of bushy and kind of like bulging out. Can you guys see that 3D effect? To make it a little bit more realistic, I'm going to use my Copic marker and kind of like add some color. But I mean, this part is kind of optional. So this is how it looks like from the front. I'm going to use some glue and felt to finish it up. I'm just gonna cut around it and I'm going to make some slits. I'm going to spread out the glue and now I'm just gonna like fold it in. And there we have it. And now it really just depends on what you wanna use it as. You can just like glue it on your iPhone case, like that's kind of cute. Or you could get some ribbon and make it into a keychain. And there we have a super cute keychain. There's just so many ways to use this. Guys, I wonder how much I can sell it for. So here's all the tools. I kind of went crazy and got like few of each. Got some extra stuff just to be like extra sure. I want to try out several tools to see which one works best for me. And again, I have no clue what I'm doing, so please bear with me. First, I got this kit. It was like $30. Let's see what they have inside. And the reveal. So what do I see here? First off, we've got this hoop thingy and the base for the hoop and a set of needles. Oh, I didn't know it comes with a needle. I kind of went ahead and kind of got some more needles. This one was the most expensive one. I think this was like $18, while the other ones were like $8. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. So you're supposed to be able to change the length of the needle. And you could just like take this part from the bottom and put it on like so. That's interesting. I also got three different kinds of cloth because I have no clue which one works best. I also got four different kinds of scissors. Honestly, scissors could really change everything. And now I'm basically all set. And the moment of truth. <laughs> okay, this is a total fail. So the very first day kind of sucked because none of my tools, despite getting so many, just didn't work. I always say this, but what tools you use is so important for art. Some tools works for some, so you just need to keep on trying until you find the right tool that works for you. So after my very failed first day, I went on Amazon and got a lot more new stuff. 
For my very first project, I wanted to start small, something easy. So I went for that black thing from Totoro or Spirited Away from Ghibli. It's called Makuro Kurosuke in Japanese. I wonder what it's called in English? It's called Dust Bunnies? Dust Bunny? That's so cute! But like, it doesn't have any ears. Anyways, I just wanted to test the water, so it's not that interesting. It's not that great, but here's my first one. So from here, I actually stopped talking. I just wanted to concentrate and actually try learning. The thing is, it's really distracting to talk and check the camera and think of how to edit the video all at the same time while making art. I just decided to let my future self do all the talking and editing and everything, so thank you, Pass Minori. By the way, this took me about 1-2 to two hours per project. I was going super slow at the beginning. Now, it would take me like 10 minutes to make that size, but I was still struggling. So for my next one, I went for my melody. I changed something and decided to do the eyes with needle felt. I noticed that I mean the texture is the same so it looks great together and you can make really small details. So my melody, check. From here, I kinda struggled again. For my third one, I tried to make Ebi Furai from Sumiko Grashi. So I was stabbing and stabbing, but I noticed that it just didn't look right. The yarn wasn't really holding onto the canvas, and every loop looked different. It just looked really, just plain bad. I couldn't get why some turns out okay and some don't, so sadly, I decided to toss this one away. Next up, I tried making RJ from BT21, but this also kinda failed. I mean, it looks okay, but it doesn't really look like RJ. Just a white fluff. I wanted to make as many as I could without caring too much of the outcome. I think quantity over quality is important when you're trying to learn something. Or that's just how I do it. I just decided to finish it and move on. And I don't know why, but I guess I felt confident enough that I could do something a little bit more complicated. So for my last one of the day, I decided to make Mario. I got this tote bag from Daiso, and I thought it would be like the perfect canvas. It turned out it was a little bit too thick, so it works, but I don't really recommend. But it works. I have to say I do like how it turned out, and considering my previous ones, I'm glad that it turned out not that bad. At this point, I just wanted to make something that I really wanted to make. I feel like making cute flowers and easy stuff, although it is easy, it's just not that fun. I mean like, I like flowers, don't get me wrong, but I don't like them enough to help me go through the hard part of the learning process. So just from my experience, when you're learning something new, I think it really helps if you incorporate things that you really like because it boosts up your motivation. So I started from this to this. Oh my gosh, my very first creation kind of sucked. Like, look at the back. It looks all jumbled up and it looks like I have no clue what to do. I was kind of happy with this, but my partner said he looks too round, <laughs> which is true. So I could see the improvement, but I'm still not feeling it. It's still really annoying and frustrating, and I'm just not comfortable yet. I still can't like grasp the technique, but I do see some improvement and that means a lot. So day three, I started to struggle even more. So I actually tried to make a sunny side up and failed the first time. Again, the yarn was not sticking onto the canvas and the loops looked horrible. So I just took it all off, tried it again, but then failed again. So I decided to start another project and this time I went for Totoro. Honestly, this project makes a great ASMR. Anyways, the first part was going great. I just finished the gray part and I was happy, but then I started to fail again when I started the stomach. Somehow the gray part was okay, but the white part was a total fail. 
I also tried another project, but that failed again. Like, look at how much I failed. Honestly, I was getting very frustrated and just upset with myself. So I finally figured out why I was having so much troubles with my project. And it was because of the yarns. So most of these yarns are from the same brand. And it's called Piccolo Piccolo. So these are all from the same brand. I got these because they were the cheapest yarns. So I learned the hard way that cheap is not always the best, especially for this project. And these ones were just a little bit too thick. This one's also too thick. So I actually decided to toss all of these away. Well, I'm not gonna like throw them away. I'm going to keep it and probably use it for a different project. But I'm gonna toss all of these away for now. And I got a whole bunch of new yarn. Ugh, it cost me $75. Honestly, crafting is really expensive. So first, it's really important to check the thickness. It can't be too thick, it can't be too thin. I also think it kind of works better if it's made out of cotton. Like these were 100% acrylic and these are made from wool. I feel like wool grabs the canvas a lot better than acrylic. So changing the yarn was the best decision ever. After I figured out the problem, I started to finally understand what works best for me, and it started to become very easy. Out of the three needles, the smallest one worked best, the thinner canvas was easier to work with, and all I needed was the right type of yarn. I think you can even see from the back of this minion that the stitching is starting to look very clean and precise. My first one, it was all over the place, it was all tangled and just looked like a jungle. By the way, this minion is like 10 times bigger than my first one, so it was a little bit time consuming. It took like half a day, but you know what guys? It was so worth it. Okay, third day, so I made Totoro and a minion. Honestly, it's starting to look like I could finally start selling them. I won't, but it's getting better. And guys, I'm starting to finally feel something. It's starting to become very entertaining and therapeutic. I can now just like listen to music, watch some movies on the side. And this needle, at first it was very new to me, but now it fits my hand. It's just super comfortable now, but like, why is art so expensive? You need to buy like every single tool and get some new ones if they're wrong. I've been going to the art store and Daiso every single day and it just costs a lot of money. Anyways, let's move on. 
So this is gonna be my last project and I'm going to make Judy hops. This is going to be a challenge. Let's see how I'm gonna do. So first off, I printed this out using my sublimation printer. This time, I'm not gonna freehand it. I'm not going to freehand this one because I wanted to try my best. I'm going to flip this over, slide this inside, and place this on top. And start. <gasps> okay, and here we have a cute tote bag. Honestly, I could just like end here, but no, we're going to do this. I've got a whole bunch of gray yarn, so I'm ready to do this. And with a pen, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it so I can see some lines better. Close it real tight, and I'm going to set this inside. I think I'm gonna start with her eyes. Now that I was becoming a pro, I started to become more creative. Like I used three different colors just around her eyes, and I also changed the length of the needle here and there on certain parts. For example, I used thinner yarn for her eyelashes and made them a bit long so they stand out and look more realistic. I also made it so her nose or her snout pops out the most. And when it was time to cut, I tried to cut it so it has that like 3D effect. And I have to say, this was so fun! I got to use my drawing skills, my sculpting skills, and my needle felting skills. I also used my Copic markers, and I was just having so much fun incorporating all my past skills. Oh, by the way, I couldn't find the right color for her eyebrows, so I just used Copic markers to color it darker. I also used some markers to color in her eyes to make some small details. Now that I was feeling comfortable, I was able to go crazy while relaxing at the same time. I was just watching Hajime Shacho, one of my favorite Japanese YouTubers, on the side for this project. Yes, the first few days was a bit challenging, but after days of trying and trying and trying, I finally got to my comfort zone. But this last project was a little bit big. Like, I was going crazy and taking my time, so I couldn't finish it that day. I worked on it for 6 hours straight, but I left her two ears and went to sleep. So guys, this is the last day and I'm ready to finish my project. So it looks something like this so far. <laughs> it looks so weird without her ears. She's a whole different species. I think I could finish it in like two more hours. This has been a very long journey. I'm just ready to finish. So yeah, um, let's get started. I'm glad how it's looking really clean. And I'm gonna start with her left ear. I honestly can't believe we're almost done. It's been a long week. I honestly really love how you can see like the eyelashes. I think it's a really cute touch. So guys, after what it feels like a very long time, I mean it was only a few days, but it feels very long, just dabbing all day, I finally feel confident enough to say that I think I got better. I mean this was my very first creation, and this is my last. I think you could tell the difference. And it turned out to be something that I actually really enjoy, and I honestly still want to make more. Like what should I make next? What do you guys think? Maybe a Disney character? A Sanrio character? How about an anime character? Please comment below. Below. But for now, I'm good, so let's just end right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.
Bye.